Tokyo. The largest metropolis in the world offers a one-of-a-kind experience that captures the essence of Japan. Home to large skyscrapers, but also historic temples, Tokyo has it all. Join us as we explore the sights and flavors in Japan's capital city, Tokyo. As we made it to Tokyo in the evening, we started our exploring at Omoide Yokocho. This collection of tiny alleys stacked in the middle of Shinjuku is full of restaurants mostly for yakitori and is a great place for dinner and drinks. We ended the night at Ben Fiddich, one of the world's best 50 bars. This tiny bar offers exceptional cocktails with no menu. Just tell them what you like and you will not be disappointed. Our second day in Tokyo was a work day for us, so our exploring started again in the evening time with one of our favorite dining experiences, standing sushi. Okay, so standing sushi restaurants are a thing in Tokyo, so you literally just come and stand in front of the preparation area, you tell them what you want, they prepare it, and they bring it for you. We have already eaten quite a bit of it, getting more of it. We are now at one of Tokyo's most iconic landmarks. And no, it's not the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. We are the at the Tokyo Tower. Yeah. Constructed in 1957, obviously inspired by the Eiffel Tower. Um, it's a communications building, but it has two observatories. So it's And the first level, first observatory is at 150 meters. And then if you pay more, you get to go to the next level, which is even higher, 250 meters. So this is our plan and we will see you there. Our next stop is the place that probably most people have in mind when they say Tokyo, Sibuya Crossing. It's a junction where you can cross in any direction and it's full of digital metros everywhere. Yes, so now it's our turn to head into the human traffic and see how it feels from up close. Let's go! After going up and down the Shibuya crossing a gazillion times, we made our way to Golden Guy. Golden Guy is a collection of tiny bars often unable to seat over 10 guests. From the outside, they look like tiny warehouses, while on the inside, each bar has a unique atmosphere that reflects the style of the master or mama, as they call them, that runs it. We really enjoyed having a conversation with the local regulars over fine drinks. I mean, all the bars here. Hello from Tokyo. 
from another beautiful day in Tokyo. Today we are starting the day at Meiji Jingo Shrine, which is a prominent landmark in Tokyo. The way to Meiji Jingu Shrine is an enjoyable walk through the beautiful Meiji Jingu Gyoen Garden. We next made our way deeper in the heart of Harajuku and the Takeshita Dori Street. Home to Tokyo's famous fashion bazaar, this street is full of trendy clothing stores and souvenirs. So first stop at Harajuku Exploring, successful. We got souvenirs. So, we have come to a dog cafe as our next stop in Harajuku. It's really cute and it's really a thing in Tokyo, so we had to do it. As we started making our way towards Omote Santo, we stopped at Maisen for yet another amazing Japanese dish. So ne next food item on our list is the tonkatsu, which is basically breaded, uh, deep fried pork cutlets. And we came to Maisen, um, it's a, a restaurant in Omote Santo that is a renovated old bathhouse. So basically tonkatsu consists of the deep fried pork, Cabbage, a salad, rice, and some soup, and then you just put some some sauce on it and eat. We next started walking around the so-called Harajuku Samjelize that leads into Omote Santo, a high-end shopping street with divine contemporary architecture. The evening found us strolling around the streets of Akihabara, known for electronics, manga, anime, and video games venues. We also paid a visit to a maid cafe, cosplay restaurants where waitresses are dressed in maid costumes. As we were not allowed to film the maids, here's a cute video of Chris singing to the tone of our maid in order to get his drink. Enjoy! Next food item on the list is ramen, and we came to a place in Akihabara. It's called Kyoshu Jangara. Jangara, yes. Uh, highly recommended. There's a lot of queues. Yes. Very nice. So ramen, uh, more or less, originate from Sapporo and Hokkaido, but every region has its own interpretation of ramen. So we're here to try the Tokyo one. We were sat at this tiny little cubicle enjoying our tonkotsu ramen that consists of pork belly, mushrooms, noodles, eggs, spring onions, and bamboo shoots. The next morning found us on a day trip to Hakone, famous for its onsen and Mount Fuji views. 
There are two ways to reach there. The first one is to take the Romance train from Shinjuku, which has huge windows for views and takes about one and a half hours. The second and faster way, which is what we did, is to take the Shinkansen from Tokyo Station to Odawara, where you change to a local train that takes you to Hakone. Once we arrived in Hakone, we made our way to our first stop, Owakudani. To get there, we took the local Tozan line to Gora, where we changed to a cable car to Sun Station, and from there changed to the ropeway. So quite some way. Ogakudani, a volcanic valley with active sulfur vents, is best viewed from the ropeway and the restaurant right at the ropeway station. Before heading to our next destination, we made a stop for lunch to try the famous Owakudani curry, made with beef, vegetables and spices, and served with rice and an optional pork cutlet. We then hopped back to the ropeway and made our way to Lake Ashi. This route is known for the views of Mount Fuji, but unfortunately for us, it was not a clear day. Once we arrived to Lake Ashi, we hopped on a cruise to explore the lake's landscapes. Lake Ashi was formed inside the caldera of Mount Hakone when it erupted about 1000 years ago. Apart from the views of Mount Fuji on a clear day, the mountains surrounding the lake are spectacular, making this a must-do activity in Hakone. So, cruise done, and now we are on our way to Hakone Shrine. Hakone Shrine is located inside Lake Ashi, so it offers a pretty solid view, but given its photogenic location, the queue for a photo is really huge. Alright guys, so our last stop in Hakone is probably the most famous thing in Hakone, an onsen. So unfortunately you cannot film inside the onsen unless you have a private room, but we didn't have a booking, so we didn't get one. We will only show you the general place and the restaurant. So we're off to the onsen now. So we just finished from the onsen. It was amazing. There are outdoor, uh, like uh, hot springs. Um, it was really, really nice. Like totally recommend when you come to Japan, you have to do this. So in the same um, onsen place, you can also have dinner. So we're having dinner. Today we are starting the day at Sensoji Temple and it is one of the most prominent temples in Tokyo. Therefore it is really really crowded. I mean Before getting to the main temple, we were greeted with Nakamisa Dori, a busy shopping street full of souvenir and snack stalls. We next continued strolling around Asakusa, where we headed for lunch at Miso Jiu, a Japanese eatery combining traditional and contemporary dishes. We had onigiri, rice balls with filling, and miso soup with tofu or beef. 
After lunch, we made our way to Yanesen, a charming part of Tokyo that feels like time stopped several decades ago. We made a big stop for a cup of at Kayaba Coffee. This is a, in an old building, uh, very traditional. Um, so it's quite famous amongst the students and artists, and of course, the tourists. <laughs> If you're looking for some upscale shopping and great sushi, then Ginza is the place for you. This is the place where you can find luxury designer brands as well as other affordable stuff. So let's go! Last but not least, from our trip to Tokyo, we came to the Team Lab Planet Exhibition. And from what we have read, it's supposed to be a very immersive and interactive environment inside. So we're quite excited to go in and enjoy. Yes, let's go! Team Lab Borderless is a unique exhibition that tantalizes all your senses by combining art, technology, and nature. Going in barefoot allows you to really feel the exhibits and immerse into the different worlds each room creates. Thank you guys so much for watching and we hope you got some nice ideas for your Japan itinerary. It would really help us out if you'd give us a like and subscribe to the channel as we have lots more travel content coming. We will see you in my next one. Bye!